It's so nice to see a show about one of my favorite parts of history. Hello once again watchers of Good TV. My name is Nick Pell and this is once again coming from my college dorm room. Now today I'm going to be talking about the Netflix show Marco Polo. The show debuted December 12th and I'm now getting to it now. There will probably be like slight spoilers in this review, nothing really major, so just know that before going into this. Lorenzo Rochelmi, he plays Marco Polo. He is the main star of this show and he does a very nice job in the lead role. Marco Polo is the son of a merchant who is well renowned in his travels throughout the world and he decides to join his father who is this merchant. He ends up in the court of Kublai Khan and he is left there and so throughout the 10 episodes that we have he has to adapt to this Mongol lifestyle. And it's very interesting to see that happen as Marco goes from a sense of innocence and fright for his own safety to being a Mongol in and of it himself in his own right. And so it's kind of a cool transition to see occur throughout the whole of the series. Benedict Wong plays Kublai Khan. He does a very nice job as well. He really gets the grace and the wisdom that Kublai Khan had when he was alive and so he does a really nice job in the role. It's really interesting to see his character in that he is very questioning but he is also really willing to embrace other cultures and other religions and other ways of life and it's really neat to see that shown in the show as opposed to some of the other ideas about the Mongol Empire and that there's barbarians and ruthless killing machines. Remy He plays Prince Jinjim and he is the prince or the son of Kublai Khan and he has issues with Marco Polo. He does not trust him, he thinks that he will betray the Khan in some capacity and justly so because most westerners were not the nicest people around during this time and so it's kind of interesting to see them kind of bicker back and forth at times just knowing where both sides are coming from. Tom Wu plays Hundred Eyes. He's the teacher of Marco Polo. He teaches him the art of combat and many different things and he's a very interesting character. Just seeing how much of a badass he can be when he just unleashes everything, goes against an opponent who is an equal match to him. It's just really cool to see this guy break out of the box, but also see him very contained as a Taoist Buddhist. And then Chen Han is Chancellor Saito. He is the main bad guy in this season, and he is one of the leaders of South China. South China is a place where the Khan is trying to rule, is where Genghis Khan is trying to get to during his life, and now Kublai Khan is trying to achieve that same thing. So Chancellor Saito, he's very mean as an individual. He is someone who you love to root against and so he does a very nice job as the Chancellor. One of the things about the show that I really did like was its accurate depiction of the Mongol Empire in particular during the time of Kublai Khan. Like I said earlier, a lot of people demonize these people and know very little about their society. I myself did not know a lot about them until just a year ago and it's very interesting to learn that they are very open and accepting of a lot of different cultures. They are religiously free, they are culturally free for the most part, and they're, they're very free people. The only thing that is really required of them is to pay tribute and allegiance to the Khan. If a city chooses not to do that, they will be attacked and slaughtered or enslaved. If they choose to do that, they'll be welcomed as people of the Khan, and it's just a very interesting society, and I think, in my opinion, Based on what I personally know, I think it's depicted in a very good fashion in this show. I don't know how much of the show itself is historically accurate. I know the general idea is, but I, I don't know if all these events happened to Marco Polo. I don't know if he uh, had to deal with a lot of things he deals with, particularly towards the end of the season. It's hard to say, and I don't have the references to speak to that or not, but uh, it's still a very interesting show and I like that it does take a very historical approach on its telling. The show is also very gruesome at times, which is another very good representation of the culture. There is foot binding. There is one scene in which a young girl gets, who is like seven or eight gets her foot begun to be bound. This is something that you start at a very, very young age, not seven or eight. And so it, it, it this was one of the scenes which made me cringe just because of how how bad foot binding is. You, you get the feet to like this this roughly this 
small of a size, and that's just not good. And uh, just seeing that happen, uh, it's just it was very tough to watch. And so I like that they put those scenes in there because it allows it to be much more historically accurate. The self-suicide, which happens a couple times in the show, is also very tough to watch, and yet it's definitely a part of the Chinese culture. So I did like to see that part as well. One of my main gripes with the show, however, is that it starts very slow. The pilot is, is fine because it introduces Marco and sets up this whole season, but after that it, it's very slow for the first couple of episodes because I had to basically force myself to keep going with the show and hope that it got better because it, it does start out very, very slow and you have to try to figure out who all these characters are, what side they're on, what allegiances they have. And then episode 5 happens, I think it's episode 5, and something really interesting happens. This is kind of how most shows end up going, it seems. They start out kind of slow as they're introducing the main cast and all the characters, and then a very big exciting thing will happen, which will just kickstart the plot, and it, it keeps going really good from there. So this show does that, and it's really nice to see. But I would have liked to see it and get quick and exciting right off the bat. And then Kublai Khan's quick acceptance and reliance on Marco Polo, it seems right off the bat, just after he proved himself maybe once or twice, seems very unrealistic to me. Again, I understand why they did this, because they kind of have to pick up the show, they have to allow Marco Polo to form a relationship with Kublai Khan, and they can't just have the whole season being him trying to do that. They, they speed that up quite a bit because that relationship has a big impact towards the end of the season. It just seemed very unrealistic in how quickly Kublai Khan was uh, able to trust Marco Polo. It seems like he wouldn't trust a foreigner, or a Latin as he's called, that quickly. The sets and costumes for the show are fantastic though. Uh, the outfits look really, really good. The sets look very historically accurate as far as I'm aware, and it just feels like you're in this this time period during Mongolia and South China and it just all looks very very realistic and really really cool. The music also helps with this as well, There's a, especially the introduction, it kind of sets the tone and the feel for the whole show and establishes it in this time period. I don't know who the composer is but they did a really nice job and yeah, the music really helps to elevate the show to another level that it might otherwise not have reached. And the last of the finale, I'm not going to talk about it, but it sets up a very interesting second season. I'll just say that. And it's something that I really did enjoy about the season as a whole. There weren't a lot of battles which were shown in this season, which I kind of would like to see. They kind of show, they show them about to start, and then show the end and talk about them. So it kind of did what Game of Thrones did in season one a lot of the time. And then... The finale does show a very interesting battle and a very cool battle, so I do like that they they did show at least one, but I would love to see more fights. Maybe season two will have more fights. The introduction of the catapult was also a very cool feature that they had more towards the end of the season, but it's really nice to see that included as the catapult did end up being one of the main ways that the Mongols conquered a lot of the cities that they were trying to conquer. I really like to see that, the like, the innovation and how it came about, I don't know how, again, how historically accurate it is, but it is nice to see it included in some degree and aspect because it was a very important part of the Mongol history. So, overall, those are my thoughts on Marco Polo. I definitely think it's a good show to watch. I hope it gets a second season, and it hasn't been getting the best reviews from critics, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Maybe it's because I knew a bit about the Mongol history before watching it. Maybe that helps a little bit. But I enjoyed it. I definitely recommend checking it out if you are at all interested. The actors all do phenomenal jobs. There's many more than what I stated, and they all have very interesting roles throughout the show. So, those are my thoughts. Leave yours in the comments down below if you have watched Marco Polo. Did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, for a comment, and subscribe once again. If you so choose, I'd appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Pell. And once again, keep on watching.